Hey my friends, welcome to another video of Python Pandas tutorial by Joystick. In this video, I will show you how to select specific rows and columns from a Pandas data frame. Basically, we will be targeting two functions here, iLock and Lock. I highly recommend that you do all the examples of lock and iLock functions that I show in this video along with me because these functions are very powerful and if learned properly, then can ease up your job of selecting data from Pandas data frames. All right. Let's now begin this Pandas video. So here I am in Jupyter Lab, where I have created a new notebook, which I have named Lock in iLog, in which we are going to first create a data frame from this file student.csv, which I have in my directory. For that, I will import Pandas first and assign it an alias PD. Now I'll create a Pandas data frame named student underscore df using the read underscore csv method of Pandas and pass it student.csv file within single quotes. There we have it. Now let's print it. Awesome. There we have our data frame printed. It has 35 rows and five columns. Now let's first start with the lock function. We can use the lock function when we want to access data from pandas data frame using labels or labels as an index. If the label exists in the data frame, then it returns the record or the row. Let's say we have a name as an index in a data frame. Then we can access a particular record from this data frame just by using the respective name. So let's do that to understand it better. On this data frame at this moment, there is this default index. So we need to set column name as its index. So we will write student underscore df dot set underscore index. And within double quotes, we are going to pass a name and then we'll write in place equals to true. Sorry, that will be capital T. Now we are going to execute it. Good. And now let's print a student underscore df. You can see that this data frame now has a name as its index. Let's access the record from this student data frame that has the name Alex John as its index. So we will write student underscore df dot lock within square brackets within single quotes. We'll write Alex John and we execute it. And there you go. Here's your first use of the log function, but you can see that the output is in the form of a series. What to do if I want to print the record as it is there in the data frame? It's simple. We copy this line of code, paste it in a new code block, and we put square brackets around Alex John. Then we execute it. You can see that now the record is printed in the form of a table row. Thing to note here is that we used a list of labels. You can also print multiple rows from a data frame using log function by passing multiple index labels in a list. So we write student underscore df dot lock and within square brackets, we start another set of square brackets within which we are going to write Alex John within single quotes. Now, if I enter a comma and also add Ronald to this list of labels, then I'm going to get two rows, one for Alex John, another one for Ronald. Suppose you want to print all the records that are between two index labels. Let's say you want to print the records between Al Pacino and my John Rob. To do so, you will have to use slicing notation. Good news is that log function also accepts slicing notation. So we will write student underscore df dot lock and within square brackets, we write the first label within single quotes, which is uh, Al Pacino followed by colon and uh, then the end label, which is going to be my John Rob in our case within single quotes. If we now execute this code block, then you will see all the rows between these two index labels. All right. We have been printing the data from all the columns of this data frame so far. Let's now print the value of a particular column for a name label. Let's find out what marks Kangna has got. So we'll write student underscore df dot lock 
within single quotes we'll write kangna that's the name index after the comma we'll write the name of the column for which we want to see the data so we'll write mark because that's the column we want to see and then we execute it and there you go kangna has scored 60 marks now if you want to print the marks scored by al pacino john mike and arnold then you just will have to pass these index labels in a list as the first parameter to the log function let's do that so we write student underscore df dot lock and then within a list we pass al pacino john mike and arnold after the comma as its second parameter we pass the mark column and now we execute this code block you can see that the data is in the form of panda series if you want it to be displayed like a table record then you will have to take the column inside a list as well so if i put square brackets around it like this and execute it there you go the marks for each of these index labels appear in the form of a table record now for the same index labels if you want to print all the columns starting from class then all you need to do is write student underscore df dot lock and within square brackets what we'll do is we'll copy this list of labels and paste it over here as its first parameter and then after a comma we'll write class within single quotes followed by colon so we are using the slicing technique again to print all the columns starting from class for these three label indexes let's execute it and check there you go all the columns starting from class have been printed for these three index labels and if you just want to print columns class and gender for all the rows of this data frame then that is also possible let's write the code for that we'll write again student underscore df dot lock and then within square brackets we'll first write colon then comma this colon is going to print all the rows of the data frame and now within a list we are going to pass class and gender let's execute this and you can see class and gender have been printed for all the names now if you are thinking that you can use the lock function only using string labels then it's not the case so let's remove this index name and restore this data frames default index so to reset the index we'll write student underscore df dot reset index and within brackets we'll pass in place equals to true oops sorry that will be capital t we run it great and now we are going to print the student underscore df and you can see that name has been restored as a column and we have a default index now now let's access the first five rows of this data frame so we write a student underscore df dot lock and within square brackets we write zero colon five you can see we are using the slicing notation here and if we execute this code block there you go rows 0 to 5 are printed using the lock function one important thing to note here is that it printed the first six rows of the data frame even when i gave 5 as the end index in the slicing notation usually python ignores the record with the end index so what happened so the explanation is that the log function treats these integers over here as labels it doesn't look at it like a row or a column position remember that let's test out this scenario by giving a column position of class or any other column let's say i want to print a column mark for the first six rows then the index of mark is 3 now so let me give 3 over here and uh, execute it should throw an error there you go if instead of 3 we write mark over here and execute it then it will give me the respective data i see data is in the form of series so let's put mark within a list 
and execute this code block and there you go we have the respective data i think we have done enough examples of lock function to give you a basic idea you should practice lock function with enough combinations of list and slicing notation to make a productive use of the same now let's do some examples of the i lock function which is another powerful function for data retrieval i lock stands for integer location which means you can access or retrieve data from a pandas data frame using integer based indexing remember integer based indexing lock uses label based indexing and i lock uses integer based indexing that's the primary difference let's now use the i lock function so first let's start with retrieving the first row of this data frame so we'll write student underscore df dot i lock and we will simply pass zero within the brackets of the i lock function and then we'll execute the code this will give the data from the first row but in the form of a series if you want to display the first row of this data frame in the form of a table row then we will simply pass zero within a list and then execute the code this will give you row number one from the data frame using i lock function in the form of a table row let's say you want to retrieve rows from one to three from this data frame then we can use the slicing notation within the i lock function so we'll write student underscore df dot i lock and within square brackets we'll write one colon four four is going to be the end index not three let's execute this and there you go we have the first three rows from the data frame actually these are not the first three rows if you see the index starts with one but in the original data frame the index starts with zero so we'll replace one with zero and four with three and let's execute this these are the actual first three rows of the data frame we can also retrieve particular rows from our data frame student underscore df by passing the row numbers as a list of integers so let's say if i want to retrieve uh, row number five index five i'm talking about and index 11 and let's say index 16. so we will write a student underscore df dot i lock and within square brackets we will pass a list of integers containing 5 11 and 16 and once we execute this code we are going to get the respective rows from the data frame student underscore df if you now want to display rows from index 10 to index 20 and also only the first three columns of this data frame then you can achieve it through the i lock function using the slicing notation so we'll write student underscore df and within square brackets we'll pass 10 colon 21 and uh, we are interested in getting only the first three columns so the slicing notation here will be zero colon three now let's execute this code block oh my god what happened what happened oh i forgot to use the i lock function let me use that run it again all right there you go only the data for the first three columns for the rows from index 10 to 20 is displayed we can also pass to i lock function a combination of slicing notation and list of integers to get the desired results so we will write student underscore df dot i lock and within square brackets i will write 10 colon 21 it is obvious that i want a rows between index 10 and 20 after comma we'll pass a list of integers containing 0 1 and 2 let's execute this all right you can see that it has yielded the same result as before only difference is that earlier on the column side we used a slicing notation but in the current code block we passed a list of column indexes iLock function is so powerful that you can display alternate rows of the data frame using a slicing notation so to display alternate rows of the student data frame we'll write student underscore df dot iLock and within square brackets we'll write two colons next to each other so this expression is going to retrieve all rows from the data frame student underscore df but if i write two here then this last parameter in this slicing expression is going to retrieve data in the steps of two hence when i execute this code the alternate records of the data frame will be displayed you can see that over here now as its second parameter 
if we pass the same expression like this then we can display alternate columns so let's execute it and check there you go you can see that this result data set not only contains data from alternate rows but also from alternate columns now an interview question if someone asks you to print a given data frame upside down then i log function is the one you should remember so we'll write student underscore tf dot i log and within square brackets we'll write colon colon and then minus one this minus one over here means from first element to last element in steps of one in reverse order let's execute this code block and there you go you can see that it has printed the data frame upside down that means the last row at the top and first row at the bottom and just by also typing the same expression for columns and then executing the code block we can print the data frame upside down as well as in reverse which means name is the first column now and gender is the last with this we have come to the end of this video i have shown you a lot of examples of iloc and log functions of pandas and i hope you enjoyed learning these functions from this video of joystick in the next video you will be learning how to add and remove columns from a pandas data frame I will see you in the next video till then goodbye and take very good care of yourself.